Justin has been fantastic. Uh, he's such a positive, uh, you know, just a positive person. Um, he doesn't let anything stop him. You know, the fact that he's always willing to go, push, work hard, regardless of anything is amazing. He sort of pushed this entire sport all over the world forward with this first time athlete out there doing something no one's ever done before. So he really is a pioneer. Justin's one of the happiest competitors I've ever seen. You did so well, Justin. Like, you blew me away with your forms. Like, and he just, like, puts a smile on, on your face. Like, 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 if you meet Justin for, like, the first time, he'll put a smile on your face. My mom and myself, we started him when he was about uh, seven or eight. Both my grandmothers uh, told me doing it. They're like, yeah, we got to put him in a uh, martial art class. Uh, to protect myself. My mom took me to class and I love her ever since then. And we had to try a few different places because a lot of places, oh, oh, he can't come here. We don't have the facility to, to, to work with him with his condition. They're like, uh, we don't know if, if, if we can uh, help him and take him on. And they didn't, they didn't want the liability to take me on. They said that they, they wouldn't be able to accommodate him and there's nothing, you know, no way that they would be able to train him or show him any moves or anything like that. Some of them were just kind of really rude. And that, that night, it was the Grandmaster who actually came in and said, look, this is what we do. Yes, we will take you on, but at the same time, I was way in the other room by myself and while the other kids was a part of all the classes they didn't work with me that much it was hard because i wasn't treated like i came today people sometimes think when someone has a disability or something like that that the person who's disabled made a glass like they're gonna break or something. Oh my God, no, I know, I don't wanna help him. Oh no, no, you know, we start freaking out. And so um, sometimes you just have to educate people. The way people look at you and try to do sports, you get denied all the time where you get bullied, you get picked on, or you're not allowed to evolve in sports. But when they find out about paratalk right now, that's when my whole life changed. When Justin was younger, I always used to tell him, you know, you can do anything anybody else does, and I've all, will always instilled that in him. And so he just tried everything. He tried wheelchair basketball, he was in the band. He just, everything anybody else did, he did also. And so I was really proud of him for making efforts and trying to do everything that everyone else did. I always have the Capel shirt and I always wanted to go to the Paralympic Games. I always like watched them and I tried soccer first and they would not take me. So when I found out that they have her in Taekwondo, that's where I contacted our head coach, Jason uh, Prunes. Kind of an interesting story, I met him as he made a phone call and asked how to get on the team. We don't have a division for you. I spoke with him for an hour, telling him personally that I would like to be a part of the team. The tenacity and the tenacious Justin Rankin not only showed up, but came out and said, I'm ready to go, what do I need to do? And they told me to come to Vegas three years ago to try out. Turn that way, and then you, you know which leg to you, Justin? Yeah. Okay, so oh, okay. you gotta kick this way. One, two. First met Justin two or three years ago. I believe it was Salt Lake City. We met there. He actually reached out to me via social media. Um, he had been, you know, following our pages and such, and he decided to uh, reach out. And you know, we met up. And he's such a positive and awesome person that uh, you know we just kept kept the relationship going from there. Take your time with it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Little taps to the floor if you need to. Keep holding time. You got this. We, as uh, you know, as able-bodied people, we take for granted what we can do, and we get a little lazy or find excuses. Um, Justin never does that. He's always ready to work. Always ready to push. 
I don't like something easy. I like something hard. I had people told me that, you know, he should not compete in, you know, in his walker, but I do it because it's who I am. It's a stint, it's my legs, and it's my heart, it's where I am. We were, we were still pretty new to para, still trying to figure out this classification. It was a weird time where we had athletes being declassified or classified in ways that didn't really make sense to us, so we didn't exactly know where Justin was going to fit in, and he actually did not get classified at the first U.S. Open. They saw his walker and they were like, we don't have a division for athletes that compete with a walker, so they didn't classify him. Justin said, they told me I can't compete. Justin said, I can compete, I am gonna compete. How do I do this, coach? Help me do this, coach. Who wouldn't want to help a guy that wants it that bad? Luckily, it's our event. We host US Open, so we're like, no worries. We're going to let him compete anyway. Doesn't matter if they say he doesn't classify. Luckily, he got a second opportunity in Spokane, Washington at the Pan Am Championship in June, just a couple months later. And there he was classified. He went in there without his walker, did the Pumse from the floor, basically, just moving his body with his hands to be where he needed to be. And he classified as P31. So now when he goes to an official World Taekwondo competition, he competes without a walker. When he's here or at nationals, something um, not sanctioned by World Taekwondo, we do let him compete with his walker so that he's upright when he's doing his pumse rather than on the floor. But he can do both and uh, he pulls it off no matter which form you have him in. He doesn't have any limitations in his mind. He's gonna go out there and compete and try to win his, in his discipline and that's para Pumse. It takes one person to keep going. That's what I feel like. It was my job to help the pure power window to, to get it where it needs to be. Justin has impacted my perspective on Taekwondo in the sense where before I had, you know, it in mind that yes, anybody can do Taekwondo, but I had never crossed my mind that someone with a, you know, physical disability or, or disabilities in general would, would even want to pursue it because of the amount of physical requirements that are needed. Even though that we're limited like type of like physical handicap or mental or like learning disabled handicap that we have that we can do it if we practice we can go out there we can do it we can compete we can show the world that we are like individuals in the past like people would toss us aside and just pretend like that we weren't there. The fact that in Taekwondo, um, people like Justin, um, para-athletes, are able to not only participate, but to showcase their abilities and their skills, there is phenomenal. And Taekwondo being the way it is, is very accepting and wants everybody to do it. And, and how, how para-Taekwondo has grown within um, the community is phenomenal. What para-Taekwondo does for us is to, it, will, it helps us to, to, to like show the world that we matter, that we exist, that we are people, individual people with feelings, emotions, passions, desires. And that's basically like what we are. We, we, we are all of those things. Taekwondo is all of those things. We all have a disability, but we all have abilities. You know, we are afraid to show who we really are. Don't be. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't. No matter, well, no matter like if you're disabled or able-bodied, we matter. We matter as a whole. We matter as a being, as a self-thinking, feeling being. We matter. You have to believe in yourself and go for it. It's not the destination. It's the journey. It's how it starts and how it ends.